Good morning once again. Thank you for joining us for our midweek devotion from Unity Baptist Church in Champaign, Illinois. Again, we extend an invitation to you to come and join us on Sunday mornings at 1015 for our in-person worship. We, we think you'll find a very friendly congregation. We love the Lord and want to serve him. And if that's your desire, then uh, you will uh, enjoy being with us. And we just uh, pray that you will at least uh, come and meet us and, and see if that's where the Lord wants you to serve him. We've been looking at King David. He's at the end of his life in Psalm chapter 37. And he is uh, basically giving uh, some advice uh, to all of us, I guess, uh, but certainly to the children of Israel as he ends his reign as well as his life. And he's been making a comparison between the wicked and the righteous. And, and some of the seeming inconsistencies in the way that uh, they are blessed, the way that they live their lives. And if you look at it from a, a simply human standpoint, uh, it can be very frustrating and discouraging. And David mentions this in verse number one, and, and his advice to people is, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious of the work against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. And, and what David is saying to us, I think, essentially is keep this in perspective. For the believer, the living out of their life is for the purpose of molding them and forming them into the image of Christ. That's God's goal in your life and mine if you are a believer. And, and as a result of that, sometimes we have to go through difficult things. And as we go through those things and as we rely upon the Lord and we trust in the Lord, then, then he begins to mold and, and shape us into the image of Jesus Christ, which is the goal of sanctification. It's what God wants to accomplish in our life after we are saved. It's not merely about, you know, you get saved, you go to heaven, and what happens in between doesn't really make that much difference. That's not true. We get saved, and a process of sanctification begins as as the Lord begins to to mold us into the image of Christ and shape our mindset and and our outlook from temporal to eternal to to make our our concerns about us personally uh, to be internal instead of external and when we find ourselves fretting because of evil doers and envying the workers of iniquity we we are are concerning ourselves with externals and and David said don't do that you get you got to keep that in perspective you got to trust in the Lord and do good you've got to uh, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart and in verse number five, he goes on. He's giving a series, a series of, of, uh, of advice to us on how to live our lives with an eternal outlook instead of a temporal outlook. And in verse number five and verse number six, he says this, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Now stop and think about this. He said, don't be jealous. Don't fret yourself because of what's going on in the life of the wicked. They may seem to be prospering. They may seem to be doing better than you are. But you focus your trust in the Lord. You delight in the Lord. You commit your way 
to the Lord. Trust in him. And that, that word there, commit, means to roll something over onto someone else. Peter had the same idea when he said, cast your cares upon the Lord, for he careth for you. And, and that, that's the, the idea in Peter. It's the idea of like if somebody throws you a hot potato, what you do with it, you toss it off to, to someone else or you just toss it away from you. But in this particular case, Peter is saying and David is saying, roll it over to the Lord. Let the Lord take care of it. Whatever it is that comes into the pathway of our life, that causes to causes us to fret, that causes us to envy, that causes uh, us to to stew about what's going on in our life. We have to we have to understand, and this is hard to do for all of us. We have to understand that nothing comes into our life that is not first of all for the purpose of making us more like Jesus Christ shaping us into his image, molding us into his character. That's why God allows these things to come into our life. And and in that process, when those things come into our life, then we roll those things that we can't do anything about anyway. All the fretting, all the stewing, all the envying, all of the stuff that we do by nature is not going to correct anything. So David says, roll it over to the Lord and trust him to bring to pass in our lives what he wants to accomplish through that thing. You say, well, preacher, that's hard. (laughs) It is hard. It's very hard because in our flesh, in our human nature, we want to grab hold of this thing and through our, our, are fretting and stewing and worrying and and all of these things. We want to bring it under control, but we can't bring it under control by those things. So David said, look, and this is something that he has learned in his own life. He says, roll it over to the Lord, or as Peter says, cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. And so David says, in the same kind of way, same kind of spirit, Commit your way to the Lord. Whatever comes in your life, commit it to Christ. Roll it over to him, and he will bring it to pass. Bring what to pass? He will bring what he designed to accomplish in your life through that thing that came into the pathway of your life. He will bring it to pass. He will accomplish his will and purposes in you. And he goes on in verse number six, and he says, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light. And here's something I think we need to take note of. He's not going, he's not saying that he's going to, to, to work everything out exactly as we think it ought to be worked out. That's that's not what he's saying. He said, the issue is righteousness, your righteousness. He's going to to demonstrate the righteousness that dwells in you. And it's going to shine as you commit your way to the Lord and you trust in him to bring to pass what he wants to accomplish in this thing that he's allowed into your life. He's going to bring out of that your righteousness, which is in fact the righteousness of Christ in you. He's going to bring it out and it's going to shine before the world like uh, the bright sunlight of noonday. And, and, and your judgment, he goes on, he says, your judgment. And, and, and by judgment, he's talking about justice. Your justice, you're going to be justified in this. And it's going to shine like the noonday sun. And, and so because that is the promise that he has given to us, therefore, David is saying, Commit your way to him. Don't sit around worrying and fretting all the time about things you cannot control. Roll it over to the Lord. Trust in him to do with it what he wants to do. And the end result is going to be 
the demonstration of your righteousness is going to shine in the world and and your justice is going to shine like the noonday sun that's the motivation not for us but for him that when we commit our way to him when we trust in him god will accomplish his purposes through us i think that's a good word for today something that we need to keep in mind and that we will commit our way. Whatever it is that you're going through in your life right now, however difficult it may be, however impossible it is for you to understand or to put it in any sort of context to your life and what good it's going to accomplish, whatever it is, roll it over to the Lord. Put, it on, put the weight of it on him and not on yourself. Cast, toss, throw it onto the Lord because he cares for you and because as you trust him, he'll bring his purposes to pass in your life. I think that's a good word for today. Let's seek to live that way in our life today, whatever the circumstance of our life may be. Father, we pray that you'll help us to do this, help us to, to commit our way to you, to trust in you, to cast all our care upon you because you care for us. I pray that this day for whoever is listening will be a blessed day and that step by step, we all will learn how to do this consistently in our life and trust you for the accomplishment of your purposes in us. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us today. God bless you and have a good day.